Anybody know what this is? It's evening primrose. Leaves go this way, that way, this way, that way, this way, that way. And big yellow flower. Quite a nice plant. It grows in patches, generally speaking. This is a weedy species that favors disturbed environments. It's been introduced and be has become established on all continents of the world except for Antarctica. The seeds of the plant are important food for birds, including the American goldfinch, northern bobwhite, and the morning dove. Bumblebees and um, larval hosts for the primrose moth and the white line sphinx moth. The honeybees also like to visit these flowers. Over the centuries, indigenous people in North America have used the plant as food and, and traditional medicine. It was introduced in, to Europe in the early 17th century as an ornamental plant. Um, in botanical, botanical gardens where the flowers are favored for nectar by pollinators such as bees and seeds for, for the birds. The seed oil is traditionally used for the treatment of eczema, asthma, um, rheumatoid arthritis, premenstrual and menopausal syndrome, and other inflammation related disorders. The indigenous people of North America used an infusion of evening primrose to speed up wound healing. They also used the root for hemorrhoids and the seed oil for skin problems. Today, evening primrose is a dietary supplement promoted for atopic dermatitis, rheumatoid arthritis, premenstrual syndromes, breast pains, menopause, and other conditions. Um, it can also be included in a lot of uh, products that are applied to the skin. Don't take evening primrose if you uh, have any kind of bleeding disorders or oral use might increase that risk. Um, if you're planning on having surgery, then stop taking it. Most of the oil is made from the seed anyways. Uh, so, you know... You want to be careful about it. Seeds of this plant are rich in sulfur-containing polyunsaturated fatty acids. Most of the plant parts are edible and they taste really mild. The roots can be eaten raw or cooked like potatoes. The leaves can be eaten raw in salads or cooked up like spinach or in soup. The Anishinaabe tribes <laughs> traditionally made a tea from the um, leaves for use as dietary aid and to reduce fatigue. Uh, the flowering stems are preferably used when they are still young in June. They have to be peeled and then can be eaten raw or fried. The flower buds are regarded as a delicacy and can be harvested from June to October. Um, now you shouldn't take evening primrose if you have a bleeding disorder. I think I already said that. But what are some of the risks that are involved? Well, you might get a headache or upset stomach, nausea, dizziness, or a rash. Um, there's not enough evidence to support the use of ev evening primrose as a dietary supplement, according to the um, FDA and things. But, you know, you, you've got to look at these things and judge for yourself. These seeds have um, amino acids, methothionine, cysteine, tryptophan, GLA, linoleic acid, and they are in these little pods that are up and down the entire stem of most of these plants after the, they start dying back. 
this is October and so they're starting to die back and as you can see these little pods dry out pretty good and then you can kind of separate it out it's going to take me a couple of minutes here to get this separated out but you can separate these out and um, collect the seed these seeds are so tiny that um, you know you'll lose them all over the place but as you'll see here in a minute I'll show you a close-up it's in like four sections each section is filled with these little dinky seeds and from what I'm understanding um, you can keep these in a soil seed bank for 70 years or more This plant has a lifespan of about two years. It grows to five to th five foot three inches tall, maybe. And the leaves are lanceolate, three to seven inches long and about two and a quarter inches wide. You now, they're all different, I think, is what it's trying to tell me. But um, after these dry out, and split they'll split into sections and spit out these seeds and it's how it reproduces now the other common names of this plant as evening star sun drop weedy evening primrose German rampion hog weed King's cure-all and fever plant it grows all over the place uh, eastern central north america from newfoundland west to alberta southeast of florida um, southwest of texas it's naturalized just about everywhere in temperate and subtropical regions the oil that's produced for the plant is more commonly used than anything else but um, if you wild craft your herbs like I do a lot of times you can just go out and pick it make sure that you do a really good uh, identification use books or uh, some sort of app for plant identification you don't want to use something that may hurt you but as you can see from the the uh, pictures that this is uh, really quite noticeable when you're walking. The oil is considered likely safe in the recommended dosages. It may increase the risk of bleeding like I've said a couple of times and uh, yeah check with your doctor make sure that it's not going to interfere with any of the drugs that you're taking. The Mayo Clinic recommends caution in people with seizure disorders or manias and by pregnant or breastfeeding women and publishes a long list of possible side effects. Oral use of evening primrose oil may cause hot headaches and nausea. But as you can see from the picture right here, right there's four little, sorry about that, try to get it underneath that underneath the uh, camera so you can see it real well I'm just sitting on my porch and opening it up but as you can see there's like a million of these little seeds in just a couple of of the um, seed pods and now you know why the birds like them so much there's a million of those the seed pods grow up and down the uh, the stem, I found them uh, wherever flowers are. I want to show you the petioles and um, shapes of the flowers so that you can get a better understanding of what it looks like.